The pragmatic programmer says that you must learn at least one new programming language every year. The idea is that by learning a new programming language every year, you gain new perspectives. That's because different programming languages solve the same problem in different ways. By learning several different approaches, you can broaden your thinking and enhance your overall programming skills. 2024 is halfway over and I personally have not learned any new programming language so far. Have you? So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to document my process of learning a new programming language, specifically Rust. Pretty sure most of you have already heard of the Rust programming language. Everyone seems to be talking about on social media nowadays. So I just wanted to check it out for myself. Hopefully this video will give you a glimpse into how I approach learning new things, how I go about finding resources for not only learning, for practicing as well. Spoiler, it's the official documentation in most cases. So without any further chit chat, let's get to learning. All right, so whenever I am learning something new, before I jump to the syntax or even create my first Hello World program, what I like to do is do a little warm up. What I mean by that is I like to warm up by watching some high level overview videos of what I'm trying to learn. In this case, since I'm learning Rust, I would first watch a couple of videos about what Rust is, what makes Rust special, what it is used for and all of that stuff. And my go-to resource at this stage is always YouTube. So let's head to YouTube and see what it has to offer. If you're also planning to learn Rust in the nearby future, then these are the three videos that I recommend you to watch in order to get a high level overview of Rust. I'm also going to be sharing all of the resources that I'll be using in this learning journey throughout this video. You can also find the links to everything in the description box below. Now let's get back to learning. Now I'm ready to jump into actually learning Rust. The primary resource that I'm going to be using and starting with is obviously the official documentation. So here I have the official documentation opened up. You can easily find it by doing a simple Google search and I'll also put a URL somewhere on the screen here. In case you're someone who finds documentations intimidating, let me walk you through the official Rust documentation and point out the things that will be useful for you in case you're also trying to learn Rust. So you can have the documentation opened up in a new tab and bookmark the relevant resources and pages as I talk about them. Starting with the homepage, you can find a higher level overview of the language, what it's used for and what are its main features. You can do a quick scan through the homepage and after that, you will find a big yellow button that says get started. This is the recommended way to get started with the language. Once you click on this page, you'll be able to find a very simple installation guide and a basic tutorial for creating your first Hello World program in Rust and a little bit about adding dependencies with the help of Cargo. What I did was I followed this guide to install Rust onto my machine and to my surprise, I found out that I already had Rust installed. I don't remember when I did it, but instead of using the older version that I had downloaded previously, I uninstalled installed it first and then installed the latest version using the recommended RustUp installer just to have a fresh starting point. After I followed along with the Hello World program tutorial, I then clicked on this learn more button which takes you to the learning resources page. There's also another link to it on the top of the documentation which you can find under the learn tab. So I just completed the tutorial that was on the previous page. It just teaches you how to create a new Rust project, how to build a Rust project and how to run a Rust project as well as add dependencies. Now I am on the learn tab here. So learn Rust. Getting started with Rust, it looks like they have provided you with enough resources to get started with right here in the official documentation itself. So the book affectionately nicknamed the book, the Rust programming language will give you an overview of the language from first principles. You will build a few projects along the way and by the end you will have a solid grasp of the language. So let me open this book in a new tab. Then the next thing that you have here is alternatively Rust links guides you through downloading and setting up the Rust tool chain and teaches you the basics of reading and writing Rust syntax on the command line. It's an alternative to Rust by example that works with your own environment. 
So it looks like this is a course. And then the third thing here is if reading multiple hundreds of pages about a language isn't your style, then Rust by example has you covered. While the book talks about code with a lot of words, Rust by example shows off a bunch of code and keeps the talking to a minimum. It also includes exercises. So it looks like you have resources to learn, which is a book, a course as well, some code examples, as well as practice exercises available to you right away. All right, let's go back to the book. Once you open the book, you'll realize that it is a very in-depth resource and covers almost everything that you'll need to know to get started with writing Rust programs. On the first page, you'll also find a link to the interactive version of this book. I ended up using the interactive version instead of the original version because the interactive version has features like quizzes, visualizations, and also allows you to highlight parts of the book as well as add notes to them. Second resource is Rust Links. So it is a command line application and you'll need to install it in order to use it. It has a bunch of practice exercises and the general structure of these exercises is that you'll have some piece of code that does not compile or has some bugs or any other errors that you'll have to fix. And the third resource is Rust by Example, which contains a collection of Rust code examples. I went through Rust by example and I realized that you're not supposed to use Rust by example parallel to the book. It is a good resource for reference after you've read a few chapters from the book. So what I decided to do was to start reading the book and after I finished each chapter, I opened Rustlink and covered the related practice exercises. So my primary resource is going to be the Rust book. So let's get started with chapter number one. So I finished reading chapter number one, after which I took a little dinner break. Before I move on to the next chapter, let's check out Rust links for any practice exercises related to this chapter, as well as Rust by example for any relevant code examples or any practice exercises that we can try out. So the second chapter is a project. In this chapter, you're going to build a simple guessing game. So I'm going to complete this chapter and show you at the end what I built. So I just finished reading chapter number two, where we built a guessing game. It was more like a guided project where we had code snippets that built upon the previous code snippet. And then there were explanations talking about what the code actually does. So we started with a basic main program and slowly, slowly we added more lines of code to it. A lot of new concepts were introduced in the game. I don't understand all of them completely, but I guess that's fine because we'll be diving into each of these slowly one by one in the later chapters. So let me quickly show you what we built our go run. So this is a simple number guessing game. So it just first prints guess the number and then please input your guess. So the program generates a random number and then it asks the user for some input. Let's say 50. Then it compares the guessed number with the generated number. If the guess is smaller than the actual number, it prints too small. So 75 is still too small. 90 is still too small. 99 is too big. 85 is still too small. 85, 90. So when the guess matches the generated number, it prints you win and the game exits. So I'm going to end today's learning here itself. I'm going to continue with the third chapter tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. So today is a brand new day in my learning journey. The goal for today is to cover chapter number two from the Rust book. Chapter two covers the programming basics in Rust. So things like variables, data types, functions, comments, and control flow structures in Rust. After I finish reading the chapter, I will revisit Rust links to do some practice exercises. So I'll see you guys later on after I finish reading the chapter. In case you are also interested in learning Rust, 
Hopefully this video gave you an idea of how to get started. If you haven't yet dipped your fingers into the code, then let me give you an overview of the basics in Rust in under three minutes. You can create variables in Rust with the help of the let keyword. Rust is a statically typed language, so every variable has a type. Rust also has type inference. Variables are by default immutable in Rust. Once you've created a variable and initialized it, you cannot change its value. However, you can make a variable mutable with the help of the mute keyword. Though you can only mutate its value, but not the type. Similarly, you can create constants with the help of the const keyword. You must always initialize a constant at the time of creating it, and you must also explicitly provide it a type. Whereas you don't need to initialize a variable. You can also shadow variables in Rust within the same scope. Data types can be divided into two main types in Rust, scalar, and compound and oh by the way this is how you create a single line comment in rust and this is how you can create multi-line comments rust has four primary scalar types integers floating point numbers booleans and characters Integers and floating points have further more subtypes. You can perform the basic mathematical operations that are similar to other programming languages. However, you have to be careful with compatible data types. The first primitive compound type is a tuple. Tuples are used to group together different values of different types into a single type. So for example, here I have a tuple of four elements. The size of a tuple cannot grow or shrink. You can access an element at a particular index using this syntax. The second primitive compound type in Rust are arrays. Arrays again are used to group together elements of the same type. Arrays in Rust also have a fixed length and you can access any value at a particular index with the help of this syntax. You can create a function in Rust with the help of the fn keyword. The main function is a special function. It acts as the entry point. In order to add parameters to a function, you must add them within the parentheses along with their data types. And to return a value, you can make use of the return keyword. You must specify the type of the return value as well. Another cool thing about functions in Rust is that whatever is the result of the last expression inside of a function, that result of the expression will automatically be returned. So here, 10 will automatically be returned from this greet function. Note that expressions are different from statements. Statements do not have a return value and expressions have a return value. Also, you should use a semicolon to terminate your statements, but expressions are not terminated with the help of a semicolon. If you add a semicolon to an expression, that will turn it into a statement. Now, this function does not return anything. If else statements in Rust are similar to if else statements in other programming languages, if else are expressions in Rust, which means that they can return a value from inside of these blocks. One more thing to pay attention to is that if and else conditions must always return a bool. You can create an infinite loop with the help of the loop keyword in Rust and you can use the break statement to exit from a loop. You also have while loops in Rust, which are similar to while loops in other programming languages. You also have for loops in Rust, which you can use like this for index in a provided range like this, where file is exclusive. Or you can directly iterate through the elements of an array like this for element in A. So that's all for this video. However, this is not the end of my learning journey. Let me know if you're interested in watching a part two of this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.